So I think it goes without saying, guys, that there's going to be spoilers in this video because uh, something that the fans have been asking me to do is to live read the first chapter of Changes by Jim Butcher. And ever since I first started this series, people have been like, wait till you get the changes. And I've never done a live read reaction on this video, on this channel before. So if it's not exciting, I apologize. It's I, I give the viewers what they want. If that's what they want, I'm going to do it. So without further ado, I'm going to read this. And I'm not going to read it out loud, but I'm just going to. But maybe I'll put the narration over it. You know, people like it when I read it like it's an audio book. Maybe I'll put the narration over it and uh, line it up with my reactions here. But um, we're going to do that right after this. Okay, here we go. Changes by Jim Butcher, the 12th Dresden Files book. Chapter 1. I answered the phone, and Susan Rodriguez said, They've taken our daughter. I sat there for a long five count, swallowed and said, Uh, what? You heard me, Harry, Susan said gently. Oh, um... Glad she's back. The line isn't secure, she said. I'll be in town tonight. We can talk then. Yeah, I said. Okay. Harry, she said. I'm not... I never wanted to... She cut the words off with an impatient sigh. I heard a voice over the loudspeaker in the background saying something in Spanish. We'll have time for that later. The plane is boarding and I've got to go. About 12 hours. Okay, I said. I'll, I'll be here. She hesitated as if about to say something else, but then she hung up. I sat there with the phone against my ear. A new death mask was going to come back and bite him in the ass. Our daughter. She said, our daughter. I hung the phone up, or tried. I missed the bass and the receiver clattered at the floor. Mouse, my big shaggy gray yellow, rose up from his usual napping spot in the tiny kitchen that my basement apartment boasted and came trotting over to sit down at my feet, staring up at me with dark, worried, doggy eyes. After a moment, he made a little huffing sound, then carefully picked up the receiver in his jaws and settled it onto the base. Then he went back to staring worriedly at me. I... I paused, trying to get my head around the concept. I... I might have a child. Mouse made an uncertain, high-pitched noise. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I stared at the far wall, then I stood up and reached for my coat. I... I think I need a drink, I said. I nodded, focusing on nothing. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Mouse made a distressed noise and rose. Sure, I told him. You can come. Hell, maybe you can drive me home or something. I got honked at a lot on the way to McAnally's, and I didn't care. I made it without crashing into anyone, and that's the important thing, right? I pulled my battered, trusty old Volkswagen bug onto the little parking lot next to Mac's place. Mouse made a woofing sound. I looked over my shoulder, and I'd left the car door open. The big dog nosed it closed. Thanks, I said. Mouse stared intently at Mac for a moment, then he abruptly sat down in the entryway at the top of the little stairs, turned around once, and settled down by the door, his chin on his paws. Mac glanced towards us. Harry, Mac's actually talking? I shambled over to the bar. Mac raised his eyebrows and blinked at me. You gotta know the guy. He was practically screaming, but he poured me a drink of something light gold in a blurred glass, and I drank it, and it burned. I wheezed a little, and then tapped a finger next to the glass. Mac refilled it, frowning at me. I drank the second glass more slowly, and it still hurt going down. The pain gave me thoughts of something to focus on. Thoughts started to coagulate around it, and then the crystallize into definite shape. Susan had called me. She was on the way. And we have a child. And she never told me. So was this kid like five years old at this point? It was probably a damn good thing I had gone into shock, because I could feel emotions that were stirring somewhere deep inside me, gathering power like a storm far out to sea. Mindless rage got people killed every day, but for me, it might be worse. I'm a professional wizard. I can make a lot more things happen than most people. Magic and emotions are tied up inextricably. I've been in a battle before and felt terror and rage in the kind of place where it's a fight just to think clearly through the simplest problems. I'd used my magic in those kind of volatile circumstances, and a few times, I'd seen it run wild as a result. When most people lose control of their anger, someone gets hurt. Maybe someone even gets killed. When it happens to a wizard, Insurance companies go broke, and there's reconstruction afterwards. What was stirring in me now made those previous feelings of battle rage seem like anemic kittens. I've got to talk to someone, I heard myself say quietly. Someone with objectivity, perspective. I've got to get my head straight before things go to hell. Mac leaned on the bar and looked at me. I curled a glass in my hand and said quietly, You remember Susan Rodriguez? He nodded. She says that someone took our daughter. She says she'll be here late tonight. Mac inhaled and exhaled slowly. Then he picked up the bottle and poured himself a shot. He sipped at it. I loved her, I said. Maybe love her still, and she didn't tell me. He nodded. She could be lying. He grunted. I've been used before, and I'm a sucker for a girl. Yes, he said. 
I give him an even look. He smiles slightly. She'd be six, seven? I shook my head. I can't even do the math right now. Mac purses his lips. Hard thing. I finished the second glass. Some of the sharper edges had gotten softer. Mac touched a finger to the bottle, watching me. I shook my head. She could be lying to me, I said quietly. If not, not, then. Mac closed his eyes briefly and nodded. Then there's this little girl in trouble. I felt my jaw clench and the storm inside me threatened to come boiling up. I pushed it down. My little girl. He nodded again. Don't know if I ever told you, I said, but I was an orphan. Mac watched me silently. There were times when, when it was bad. When I wanted someone to come save me, I wished for it so hard, dreaming of, of not being alone. And when someone finally did come, he turned out to be the biggest monster of all. I shook my head. I won't let that happen to my child. Mac folded his arms on the bar and looked at me intently and said in a resonant baritone, you gotta be careful, Harry. I looked at him, shocked. He used grammar. He used grammar. Something like this will test you like nothing else, Mac said. You're gonna find out who you are, Harry. You're gonna find out which principles you'll stand by to your death and which lines you'll cross. He took my empty glass away and said, you're heading into the Badlands. It'll be easy to get lost. I watched him in the stunned silence as he finished his drink. He grimaced as though it hurt his throat on the way down. Maybe he'd strained his voice using it so much. I ate my sandwich slowly and paid men. Thanks, I said. He nodded. Luck? I got up and headed back for the car. Mouse followed beside me, his eyes lifted, watching me to see what I would do. I marshaled my thoughts. I had to be careful. I had to be weary. I had to keep my eyes open. I had to keep the storm inside me from exploding because the only thing I knew for certain was that someone, maybe Susan, maybe my enemies, was trying to manipulate me. Either way, Mac was right. I was heading into the Badlands. Okay, so I wasn't nearly... Nearly, uh... Wasn't nearly what I was expecting. I think I set myself up to expect something just absolutely devastating. Uh, to me, I mean, obviously not, uh, you know, that his little girl's been taken. But the fact that he has a kid, I think that's great news, right? Uh, I mean, I was hoping him and Susan could work things out. Uh, I guess, obviously, the big questions I have is... Um, is Susan still uh, pre-med? That's what I call like the, the, the where she's not actually a vampire. She's just if she feeds once, she's gonna be a vampire. And obviously, what uh, what gifts or curses, if you will, does the kid have? So, um, uh, an interesting premise for sure. I think that uh, Butcher always sets up his books with a very very good first chapter uh, and always a, a good first line, obviously. But uh, if you watch my turncoat review, you know that uh, I was way off, uh, at least so far. At least so far, there's, there's, there's more to go. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole book uh, live, obviously. But uh, people wanted me to read the first the first page. I decided to do the first chapter and see what I thought. Uh, yeah, obviously, changes are very much on the horizon. So, um, guys, if you want to talk about it, uh, hit me in the comments. But know that... Uh, Please give me a little bit of time before you talk about the rest of the book <laughs> because uh, I haven't actually read past the first chapter, obviously. So uh, give me a few days, I think, before you full-on uh, spoiler me. But uh, I, again, I hope it was exciting for you as it was for me.